This is a big problem. This isn't gonna work. Now we find out if the uh, filler neck leaks or not. There we go. <laughs> Despite what you guys may think, this is our first ever engine swap. And because of that, we reached out for some help. I was able to get a lot of help from Mr. Clinton Penner, as you guys probably know as Dirt Garage. He spent some time with me on the phone labeling all of the 3.4 wires that I would need to run in the Chinook. We're basically making a standalone harness so we can keep all the Chinook wiring factory and all of the 3.4 wires that we need factory. I then got my buddy Jeff down to the Chinook to help me put it all together. And we just ran some dummy wires twisted together to test everything to make sure that it was gonna work. And that's what we're doing now. And then I had to prime the fuel system. Sacrifices. Yeah. You said it was gonna be an intimate relationship with this Chinook. I did. There's a little bit of fuel on this line. Yeah. It's got air before the top. <laughs> oh! Oh, yeah. Pressure? <laughs> oh, there, there's fuel in my mouth. Oh, I actually swallowed some, unfortunately. That's a bonus. We are officially primed. <laughs> All right, first start ever. World's first Land Cruiser Chinook. <laughs> Runs for the first time. All rise. Yeah. Nope. Not on the key. Do we? Did you lose a wire over there or something? We probably lost a wire. Constant. There it there. is. <laughs> there it is. However, it got over there. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> okay, now that the ECU is plugged in. We're going to try again. Ready, Jeff? Uh, Got to give a big shout out to Jack Perry for realizing that not only the ECU but the body harness was not fully plugged in. Yeah, we didn't unplug any. We didn't unplug anything else. Let me let me do my rounds. Yeah, we didn't really do that. There's too much excitement. Tight. Everything over there, good. Yeah. Yeah, we still okay. got a little dude. Let's try it. it okay. Looks... Ready when you are, Jeff. Fuel. Crank. <laughs> Huge success. Can't believe that the wiring was actually as easy as it was. It was one of the things that I was fearing most, and we got it done in a few hours, which was awesome. Now that we know what wires need to go where, we just need to run the relays and get everything buttoned up and looking good. Another big shout out to Jeff Anderson for coming and buttoning up all the wiring with me. Definitely a weapon when it comes to soldering. All right, we are in the Forerunner that donated its engine. And now it's going to donate its floor and transmission tunnel. All right, we're going to test out the EcoFlow with a Sawzall. So after spending all this time cutting out the Forerunner's transmission tunnel to use in our Chinook cab, I quickly realized that it was going to be just as much if not more work to use this as it would be to just make a brand new one. 
So here we go with that. Got to give a big shout out to Rob and Adam and Metal Supermarkets for always getting us the metal we need right on time. If you've been around for a minute, you know that we've been busting our butts to meet our deadline on November 7th so we can get to Denver, Colorado to meet one of our new sponsors. It is a little scary how much work we still have to do, so we have been putting in the longest days of our lives trying to get this build done as fast as we can, as well as move out of our house. We're definitely going all in on this, and it's a lot. I'm currently making a mess of Stacy's nice painted floor by building this stranny tunnel. It's not the prettiest thing yet, but it is gonna be strong and it's gonna work and it's gonna get covered, which is the most important part. As long as it's sealed and covered, that'll be great. Don't look too close. Flooring professional here right. today. Right. <laughs> She's also the sewing professional. Sewing professional, flooring pro professional. She's also a professional chef. Handy woman. Handy woman. Good to have around. Great to have around. Don't find them often. Company is 100 out of 10. So the Chinook Speedo cable is a manual Speedo. And the Speedo from uh, this transmission, 93R150F, is a digital Speedo cool piece of information for you guys. You can swap to a manual Speedo cable from an older truck, it's like a W56. And what's even cooler is the Speedo cable actually plugged from, the Speedo cable from that W56 plugged into the back of our dash in the 76 Chinook, like the factory dash, which was just wild. So we're gonna have a Speedo in our dash. Whether but or not it's accurate? It may or may not be accurate, but it'll move, which is cool. All right, it's starting to look pretty nifty in here. I left the edge here so we can build off for cup holders and such. So along with our brand new brakes, we are doing 100% brand new brake lines. The 80 series uses a banjo bolt at the caliper and I bought brand new banjo bolts, which were 10 bucks a piece, but I wasn't about to put a rusty bolt on our brand new calipers. So we got brand new brake lines, we're running it to uh, little little question mark I bent here on the hard line and then on the factory these are rubber but we're gonna run stainless braided extended lines because we're big flexi guys and then this will get uh, mounted somewhere here and go over to the master cylinder so we're gonna put this guy on right now So we tried a bunch of different options for our fan shroud and ended up just going with a mirror. Just kidding. This is a universal, universal. This is a universal fan shroud from Amazon. And we're about to see if it's going to work. And the verdict is in. It appears that yes, it is going to work, which is fantastic. Get it? Fantastic. Is this one. a fan shroud? Yeah, good job. It's funny, right? Got it, Stace, yeah. <laughs> It was getting to be about the time that we needed to flex test our new house. But before that, we had to make some cuts.
We had to stop at the lift because we were still rubbing on the fender. This is still on stock springs and all four wheels were completely planted. We'll do another flex test once we have our new coils, shocks, and some more fender trimming. But it's pretty cool to know that our house is gonna flex at least this much. We just finished making our battery tie down strap. We used the factory little screw that hooks into the fender and we've been struggling to figure out where and how to attach our coolant reservoir. And then Stacy had this wicked idea to <laughs> grab it around the neck and we used a spring steel clamp. So it's a factory Toyota spring steel clamp and we just welded it to that and you just pinch these and it holds our coolant reservoir nice and tight. And boom, we have a coolant overflow. How thrilling is that? We are gonna run the factory air box. We're not gonna use the cone, which you may have seen in our last video. No cone, we decided this is gonna be better dust protection. Also just easier factory replacement when we have to replace air filters, just have the nice paper filter. Doesn't look as good, but that's okay. We're definitely going for uh, function, function over, over fashion. Over fashion, function <laughs> over fashion. Uh, so we just use riv nuts. Actually, we just use riv nuts uh, here. Um, this one is actually not gonna clear the hood, so we're gonna have to take the grommet out and just uh, screw that down. But yeah, nice and secure. Just gotta, you know, meet the gap and we're on our way. So we've been working on a custom steering shaft. Jason did this last night. I'll just show you what we've got. So this is obviously the steering column out of the Chinook and we need to connect it with two mini U-joints to the steering box on the 80 series chassis. So this is actually from William. This is out of a second gen Tacoma. And what we did last night is we sleeved it and plugged it onto this plate that we see in C cut to match this. So this actually has a solid plug, like a solid piece of rod that goes in to this shaft. And then we welded both sides of it and to the plate. So this slides onto here, which will be at the firewall, which you'll see when it's installed. And then this would have gone into the Tacoma steering box, but we need to adapt it to the FJ80 steering box. So I've marked these and uh, we need to cut, cut this and we're gonna sleeve it. I've got metal to sleeve both sides and then weld it together and then put it back in. So we just got to make this guy go onto that. Is the sleeve. It's not going to go that far. I got to cut this bevel off. It's going to sit right here. This is actually a gusset from a trail gear shop a trail gear shock hoop kit. So we're gonna have something like that. And like that. Would be our new steering shaft. What a beauty. Cool. Yeah, this is a big problem. This, this isn't gonna work. Okay, so this is our problem. This is the steering shaft that we just made. And this is our exhaust flange. When this is tight, it's like right there. We've got like a quarter inch, a tight quarter inch of clearance between the exhaust flange where we actually like, we need it way over. Right now everything's loose, but I need it I, I'd be happy with a solid like big half, more like five eighths clearance there. I'd be happy with that. 
Um, to get that, we're gonna have to do some interesting stuff, though. We're gonna have to, oh gosh, sorry, it's too dark. Someone might complain. We're gonna start by trying to just make all of these holes a little bit bigger where it bolts to the firewall. We're gonna make these just like an eighth bigger and then get bigger washers and then we'll try that. Make it bigger so we could pull it over to the driver's side a little bit and now we have overexposure. Just kidding. Now we have focus. Now we have a decent amount of clearance. We got I know it's kind of hard to see on this lens, but oh, maybe through here, yeah. Now we have well over half an inch of clearance. It's a little, it's a tiny bit tight there, but that's honestly the best we're gonna get. Yay. What are you working on, Stace? Insulation. Yeah. Hopefully I can do a better job than this. The goods. Barbecue chicken, some Greek one, and some other... I don't, I can't remember. Damn. weeks ago we reached out on our Instagram story asking what you guys thought we should do for running OBD2 sensors so we can have all our gauges and analytics for the engine displayed on a screen. We got a ton of messages, people running everything from cheap Amazon Bluetooth units, expensive standalone OBD2 scanners, and just free apps on their iPhones or Androids. What we ended up going with is this Android Double Din Deck from Amazon, and we'll be able to run the Torque Pro app. So we will have all of our gauges, RPM, water temp, fuel, everything displayed on this Double Din Deck wirelessly from a Bluetooth reader that will plug into the OBD2 plug. This is a great option for us because we won't need to have our iPad permanently mounted. We'll be able to use it separately for drawing and maps, and we'll also be able to download apps onto this deck like Gaia for GPS and a ton of other things. We didn't have to drill any new holes. Just a couple of rip nuts. Well, I guess since you're going to be coming with us to our new house, which is the Chinook, <laughs> you can have a beer with us. In our old house. In our old house. Crazy. Seven years. I lived here seven years in this. 500 square foot single room. Started businesses here. Started relationships here. Started the best relationship of my life here. This is what full commitment looks like.
This is literally it. This is what it looks like, guys. It looks like wearing the same clothes every single day um, and moving out of your place the very last minute. To follow a dream. To follow a dream. To do something that we've wanted to do for years. And all it takes is all you got. Yeah. And we're giving it all we've got. <laughs> and I couldn't be more excited and thankful to just let go of everything that was holding me back here and just take with me everything I need feels so right now it's all changing and it's thrilling it's exciting it's new it's fun and it doesn't feel scary at all it just feels right you can still see the two handprints very faintly right there the very first time that I walked in here and I did this and then I climbed around the whole thing and I was like yep yeah, I want to live here and now I'm saying yep yeah, I'm ready to go cool every time I've had radical change I've gone through radical transformation and that's thrilling. So on to the next. Let's keep going. Full faith forward.